Here are two similar theorems about triangles and ratios, the Menon-Loss theorem and the Cheva theorem. Uh, I'd like to thank Jack from Minnesota for making me aware of these two very cool theorems. On the next page will be an example of the Menon-Loss theorem. Notice that the lengths change and the ratios change as I change the, the triangle. So here we have the lengths and here we have the ratios of some of those lengths. And I'm going to grab point A and you can see that all of the lengths change and some of the ratios change. I grab point B, similar things happen, point C. And even if I grab point F, so on the next page we're going to multiply those three ratios together and then change the triangle and the floor pattern. So to do that, I'm going to put in a text box and say to multiply x times y times z, those are just dummy variables. Right click and calculate. For x, it says select x, I'm going to use this ratio in blue. y will be the ratio in red, z the ratio in brown, and the answer I'm getting is 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab point A and change those ratios and change those lengths. And you can see that, surprise, surprise, that calculation stays at the number one. So let's go ahead and summarize that. You can see the product of those ratios, no matter how I change these, is one. A similar theorem to the Menelaus theorem is the Cheva theorem. We're going to do a similar investigation. Notice that lengths change and ratios change. So here are the lengths and here are the ratios. And I'll grab point C, grab point E, grab point A. And you'll notice that the ratios don't actually change here unless I grab point B, move that a long way, or point F and move that a long way and then point E. Similar to what we did with the Menelaus theorem, we're going to multiply the ratios together. So again, I'll create a text box. X times Y times Z. And I'm going to calculate that text box. Here's what X is, this will be what Y is, and this will be what Z is. And Surprise, surprise, or maybe not so surprisingly, we'll grab this and that product is going to be 1. So summarizing the results, product of <coughs> those ratios, no matter what, is going to be 1. One of the great things about dynamic geometry is that you can explore, investigate, and discover ideas. And I use the geometry app of Key Inspire to see that both of these theorems work for many cases. Can we prove it for all cases? Well, that's left for you. I do have a hint if you need to see the hint. You can stop the video otherwise right now. And the hint is to use areas of triangles that have bases with the segments being referenced. That'll be my hint. Thanks for listening.